Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. After nearly two years of delay, the April 11 deadline for concluding power contracts between ESCOM and renewable energy generators was not met. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss this latest twist in the long-running saga. Hi Terence. Hi Shemel. What is the background to the April 11 deadline and why was this seen as being important? Well, as you said in your intro, it actually goes back uh, to 2015. The second half of 2015, we had the fourth bid window of the Renewable Energy RPP program, which has been very successful. We've seen uh, 190 plus billion rands worth of uh, mostly solar photovoltaic and wind, but other renewables investments, CSP and other types of plants invested since 2011. And we've uh, uh, int uh, introduced quite a lot of, um, quite rapidly, renewable energy into the South African mix, which is co still coal dominated. And, uh, but the fourth ro bid window uh, came at a time when Eskom started to stabilize its uh, performance. And in 2016, it became clear that Eskom uh, was refusing to sign these power purchase agreements, even though these projects had been procured. In fact, the fourth bid window was divided into three uh, parts, with the first uh, allocation procured, and then another allocation, an expanded round procured in, in around November 2015. And there was also the so-called expedited round, which was never procured. And then, uh, so, so it's been quite a long-running saga, as you suggest. And uh, what the, the after the Eskom refused to sign, uh, there was um, a period of hiatus and it was really Eskom saying that uh, there's an affordability problem here. Um, and then on, uh, this in the State of the Nation, uh, President Jacob Zuma announced that uh, these, these uh, bid windows, this bid window 4 would be procured as, uh, as agreed. And uh, after that, uh, the f energy then Energy Minister, uh, Tina Jo Matt Pedersen, gave the indication that everyone should be ready by the 11th of April to sign the power purchase agreement. So it's been, uh, so it's been a long uh, time coming. There have been a lot of uh, false starts, but this was supposed to be the next date. But then, uh, obviously, there's been the cabinet reshuffle on the 31st of March. We have a new energy minister in the form of Momoloka Kubai, and uh, she decided she needed a bit more time to get her head around the renewables program and to consult uh, with her cabinet colleagues, most notably uh, public enterprises, Lynn Brown, uh, and she wanted to get her concurrence on the procurement of uh, these um, new uh, 37 renewable projects, and uh, we now have this latest delay. What does this mean for the 37 affected projects and renewables in South Africa? Well, at the moment, uh, it's, it's divided into two camps. There's definitely concern from all the uh, bodies and the RPPs that underline those bodies that we have yet another delay. Uh, some are seeing this as a way to actually stop the process from proceeding at all. And uh, there's also suspicion that in stopping this to create the scope for ESKIM to accelerate plans around its nuclear procurement process. And we saw recent reports around uh, that. Uh, we, well, we already know there's an RFI out in the market for nuclear. That will close on the 28th of April. Then there's suggestions that uh, um, that by June, well, what Eskom has always said is by mid-year, if they get the approvals, they'd like to enter a, uh, or, uh, issue an RFP, which is more of the commercial side of, uh, of a tender. Um, so there's that suspicion as well. However, there's others uh, within the renewable uh, sector that are saying, you know, that the new minister has a right to try and get uh, you know, to get to grips with the renewable programs, understand the concerns which they feel have been addressed, and once she gets uh, her head around it, she will then set a new date. So at the moment, it's, it's not clear uh, whether the new date will be set very soon or whether there's going to be another protracted delay. Um, I think the, the optimists amongst the renewables industry, in the renewables industry believe a new date will be set soon and that uh, that uh, Eskom will follow through with its legal, legal obligations and sign the power purchase agreements. The pessimists uh, and the skeptics believe that this, uh, this may be uh, another nail in, or attempted nail in the renewables coffin, despite the fact that renewables are becoming far more competitive than they were when we first started the, the renewables prog procurement program all the way back in 2010, 2011. Do you think this issue will eventually be resolved? 
I think that is that is the uh, the key question for now, uh, and also the time frame around this. As you said right at the beginning, it's nearly two years since those first bid window four projects were procured. Um, it, by November, it will be a full two years for all of those those projects. So, it's 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 a long time that uh, investors have had to be asked to be be uh, kept patient. Plus, there's a whole lot of processes that take place and and uh, quotations and um, you know your suppliers have to hold prices for a certain so you have to get a refresh on all those and that has been a big part of the last few, few last month after the state of the nation uh, injunction by the president all the, the bid quotations related to the connection of these um, projects had to be revised so they had to get, because they had lapsed, they had to get Eskom to re uh, reissue those. And some of those came back not quite as they were before. Again, raising suspicions that Eskom is, is trying to put every hurdle possible in the way of these projects. But it's going to be interesting to see how the Minister Kabai responds. She obviously hasn't had a very long time in the office. She has been, uh, been meeting with various industry stakeholders since her, uh, since her appointment. But it, this one is going to be watched very closely um, to see whether th this new minister is going to be a further impediment to, a, a, to projects that have been legally procured. And the legal opinion around this, even though we are in surplus, which we weren't really, if you think back in 2015 when these procured were procured, we were still uh, uh, just exiting load shedding. So the, 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 the whole stabilization of the system really happened post this supposed event. So these were procured legally, and it seems that the RPPs will have legal rights should uh, the minister delay for, for, for much longer. But that's not the line of march for now. The, the renewables companies seem to be exercising some additional patience. They've already been quite patient. I am concerned, though, that there seems to be two messages coming from the RPP office and the uh, renewables they're saying that all the issues around the cost recovery of these have been resolved uh, through a process with DOE, with the National Treasury and with NERSA. Uh, if you speak to Eskom, they are firm that this has not, is not the case. They're saying the cost recovery for these projects and for some of the projects already in the system is, is not finalized. And uh, in fact, there's a whole lot of uncertainty because the regulatory clearing account mechanism which allows Eskom to recoup, recoup revenue that it may have under-recovered on, say for instance, not just from renewables, but from coal, or in the old days it was a lot around diesel. Um, that mechanism was al allowed Eskom to adjust its tariff to recover. That mechanism is currently closed to Eskom because of the legal uncertainty. The car court d d described the uh, as unlawful, the last use of the RCA, or the last application of the RCA by the regulator. The regulator is appealing, but th that appeal hasn't happened. So the cost recovery from Eskom's perspective is not clear, even though on the other side there, there's suggestions that there was a meeting of minds that Eskom would always be able to recover these costs. And in fact, these projects, that once the shovel is in the ground, or once they reach financial close, which is at the signing, which, which would have been April 11, uh, there's, there's still a process of getting the shovels in the ground, there's still a process of building, uh, these projects which take some time. So Eskom would only really be play, paying for any electricity arising from these plants, you know, it, maybe in a, in a year's time or maybe even uh, longer than that. So it's not an immediate threat to, to Eskom. But there are, there is an element of cost under recovery related to renewables as it stands. Eskom says it's going to grow to uh, a 10 billion sort of level. So I think there does need to be some meeting of minds, some visibility on that cost recovery, because otherwise this is going to be a, a perpetual issue um, for Eskom and for the renewables companies. And I think it's also going to lead to delays for any further procurement process. So we should have seen already the gas uh, to power program starting to enter the market. That's, there's no sign of that, both given the supply dynamics in the, and demand dynamics in the electricity sector, which makes it you know, less urgent, but there's also no sign because of the uncertainty. And I think uh, there's a lot of balls in the air that need to be caught. And one, is that one of the key ones is the finalization of the integrated resource plan. So the immediate one around cost recovery, but more long term, we need some visibility on what, we, uh, what a realistic integrated resource plan is going to look like. 
and it is a really, really contested terrain at the moment, with it looks like um, a wedge being opened for nuclear, but it's not really a, a least cost or competitive option. Um, but government's saying it's it's part of the mix, it's part of policy, but um, so is renewable energy's part of policy, and in this case, the policy is not being adhered to. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.